If you've ever been out to a park where, uh, you know, you want to get on the air, you want to use your radio for making some contacts, maybe you want to be a hunter for parks on the air, you're going to need a way to set up your antenna. And I think that these three brackets that I'm going to show you today are a way that you can get on the air and set up your HF antenna. So you can see that putting these brackets on the end of my table that I'm sitting at makes it really easy to give yourself a base for putting up an antenna. And that's what you want. You want something that's going to be solid, durable, and will hold a few different configurations when you're trying to get on the air. Now what all three of these antenna mounts have in common is a 3 8 inch thread. All of these antennas have 3 8 inch threaded ends, like for a hamstick or an MFJ or a chameleon whip antenna or even a buddy pole setup. They're all 3 8 inch antennas. And this is why I think this is a fair comparison to give you these options, show you how it works. I'm going to go over these three brackets and give you the pros and the cons that I think these antennas have. And this will give you some information for, well, setting up an antenna and having some extra gear in your bag. So the first bracket I'm going to show you is this clamp mount. Uh, it's pretty common, a lot of people use them, but if you don't know about it, your clamp's got jaws so that it'll grab onto a pole that you might mount this way. And you can squeeze around the pole or fence pipe that you might want to mount to. Or you can mount this like I'm going to be doing today, which is onto a park bench where the table is thick enough and I can squeeze these brackets here and get a good connection. And on this end here, I've got the Allen screws, which will keep this bracket from moving around and keep it in the spot that you want it to be when you're doing it. When you loosen up the, the end screw, this will let you rotate the bracket horizontally and vertically. So I guess I'd be doing this way because your coax is going to be down. So the coax is going to fit here, go down, and now you've got this mounted on a pipe, and you've got your antenna vertical. So the mount here is a 3 8 inch thread, which most whips um, and ham radio gear is set for, 3 8 like a ham stick or something like that. This lets you put the antenna two ways. So if you are mounting it to a table like I am, I want this thing to be vertical, so I'll rotate it this way. If I'm mounting it to a pole, I'll rotate it up here, and tighten the screw down. All right, bracket number two, which is the chameleon antenna clamp mount. It's a quarter inch thick plate, it looks like here, and I think this is eighth inch for the beam part that goes down. It has a screw on here for clamping the bottom part of the bracket to whatever surface that you're gonna have to. And this mounts onto a table or some sort of uh, material that's out this way. You can clamp it down and lock it in place. Now they have a ground screw on here. It's mounted to this bracket plate. So when you screw your coax in, this part of the antenna bracket is your ground, and here's where you'd hook up your radials. You can strip back some wire, or if you've got a connector on the end, you screw the wing nut all the way off, put your connector on, and screw it back down. So now the last bracket we're looking at is the SNK antenna system. It's an HF bracket. This has a number of different mounts on it. It's made out of aluminum. It's quarter inch aluminum or aluminum, however you would like to say that. And with the two brackets, you can mount this antenna bracket in the vertical position like this, or you can mount it horizontally. And it's got a couple of different mounts where you can mount to your table like I'm going to do today with the quarter 20 thread on the bottom. And I'll be able to screw it down to the table where I've got these holes built into the table. Now, if I didn't have these holes into the table and I didn't need to use the quarter inch 20, I would just clamp this to the part of the table here, squeeze this down with an external clamp, and it would be good to go. The first mount is going to be the bracket, the more affordable bracket mount. And we're going to screw this down and we want the antenna connection to be going in a vertical position. So the first thing I'll do is get my wrench, loosen it up, and give that a twist. So now I'm in the upright position, getting ready to install this thing. You want to make sure to tighten this down before you hook everything up or you're going to be taking it apart. This thing feels really solid. I don't think it's going anywhere. Next up is the chameleon mount. Loosening this up just enough to get onto the table. This thing's going to fit right on the bottom of this. Now the last mount, I'm going to mount with a clamp. I'm not going to use the quarter 20 threads just yet. And this is the clamp that I'm going to be using for hooking this to the table. I use this for a bunch of different things for ham radio. I'll put this in a link in the description down below. You can check that out when the video is done. And that's not going anywhere. Now, if you want to mount this bracket on the table using the quarter 20, let me show you how that works. I'm going to take this quarter 20 threaded nut that I picked up at Ace Hardware, I think, and I'm going to stick that. It's going to screw into here at the bottom of the antenna bracket. And I'm just going to stick that through the holes here on the bottom of the table. This is going to lock it down really nice. And now that's not going anywhere this way. 
I'm going to put a couple different antennas up here today. I'm going to use the Chameleon Whip. It's really similar to the MFJ Whip. Personally, I think the Chameleon Whip is uh, more solid and more durable. Over time, I think about a year's worth of use of my MFJ, that thing got so weak, the sections wouldn't stay up anymore, so I have to use tape. The Chameleon's been pretty solid for the time that I've had that, just about a year now. The next antenna I'm gonna be using is a buddy pole. This is a buddy pole whip on the top of a 80 meter coil and a mast extension to get this on top of the brackets. Now, what I think is important to consider when you're putting up an antenna anywhere really, but a park would be just as important using brackets like this. You wanna make sure that whatever you're putting up, it's strong enough and solid enough to handle the wind that might be coming your way. There could be a storm on the way or it could just all of a sudden pick up. And if you've got a, a whip like I'm gonna put up, we're gonna go for 20 meters today, putting at least the chameleon antenna up. We wanna make sure that that 17 foot whip isn't gonna blow over or fall onto anybody while you're using it. So keeping it safe is a good thing. For something like this, I find it's easier to just screw the antenna on and extend the whip after it's screwed down on its base. So one thing to consider about an antenna bracket like this one, this is the lower cost bracket, the one that you clamp on. Because of the leverage you have with this antenna on the bracket, it is actually easier to move this thing. You have to put some pressure on it, but if the wind was blowing, that could be a factor. So now let's try the chameleon. Now already the chameleon antenna is, feels way more solid. On this bracket, it's not going anywhere. Even if this thing was extended, I can tell it's not gonna move. We'll pull this up just the same. Like the chameleon antenna bracket attached to the table, that was really solid. This is also super solid and it is not moving around. Using the quarter 20 inside of this uh, grating that's on the top of the table does let me move the table around. All right, like the chameleon antenna bracket, this is also really solid. I can feel it's not going anywhere. If there's any movement at all, it's in this grid work that's on top of the table. So let's pull this thing all the way up. Now for this setup, I'm gonna be using an, a buddy pole setup. This is the one of the arms that come with the system. This is an 80 meter coil, it's pretty big, and one of the end whips. Now I'm not using this for 80 meters. It's more of an example to show you how this fits on there and how well that works. So if I extend out the whip and put this on top of there, you're gonna get a decent wind load, which would be representative of what you can expect out in the field. Now I'm not being super hard on this thing, but you can see it moves around pretty good and it's not moving. It's staying where it needs to be. If the wind was blowing that hard, I'm out of here. Now putting the buddy pole antenna, we'll call it the buddy pole antenna. Now putting this on the clamp mount bracket, it's a little risky in my mind because I don't have a super solid grip on this table or I don't feel that 100%. It's not like I'm gripping onto a pipe where I have a whole bunch of contact. I'm only grabbing two parts of the table right now. So would this thing work? Absolutely. Now, what I'm gonna be using for a ground radial is a 17 foot piece of wire. And I'm gonna use that, show you how it clips onto each of these brackets so you know how the radial system works. Now for this bracket, I can take the clamp and I'm just gonna clamp it onto the end of the bracket here. And I'm gonna squeeze this right onto the side of the bracket, the mount. Fits right on there here, that easy. Now for the chameleon mount, I'm gonna be using the screw that's down here, but really because I've got this uh, grip here, I can really squeeze it to any part of the bracket. So I'm gonna squeeze it right down here. So for this bracket, this last HF bracket, I can take and connect it right here to this bracket, to the screw, or really anywhere. I can clamp it right onto the side of this. And then uh, we're good to go. Now what are the cons for this bracket? It does have a limit on how wide these jaws will open. It's about two and a half inches or so. It's not super heavy duty. It is strong, but I don't know that I trust a big solid antenna, big long antenna that has a lot of leverage to bend this thing. I'm not sure I'd want to do that, at least for an extended period of time. The screws on the end means that you've got to carry a wrench around. You've got to carry a wrench like this that's going to be able to tighten these down in the position. Unless you're always guaranteed you're going to operate one direction, then you don't need to have that. All right, what are the pros for this bracket? Well, it is cheap. Coming in at the time of this video, it's around $40, $39.99, I think. And it is uh, lightweight, and it's pretty functional. You get to have two different configurations. You can mount this in two different ways. And with the clamps, the grip that's in here, it's gonna hold that pipe or that mount pretty well. 
So what are the cons for this bracket? Well, coming in at the time of this video, I think this bracket is about $99. So it's about $100, so it is a bit expensive. The bracket is limited to only one position. That means it's gonna be mounted so that it's flush horizontal to make your antenna be in a vertical position. And you can't move it from there. So what are the pros on this antenna bracket? Well, it's very heavy duty. This clamp mount is really strong. This thing clamps to a table and it won't let go. And the finish is nice. Now, what are the downsides with this bracket? Well, it is very heavy. This thing weighs in at uh, one pound, eight ounces. So it's one and a half pounds. It's not a light bracket. It's something that you got to carry around in, um, in your bag. It's going to add weight. And the cost of this bracket at the time of this video in 2023 is $75. So the pros for this antenna, it is heavy duty. It's got a lot of components and it got a lot of flexibility for moving the antenna. If you want to change the bracket here, we loosen up the nut. You can also make this a dipole by changing the bracket so that the counterpoise side goes out horizontal and so does the antenna side. Now, if you're out in a park like this and there's a pole stuck in the ground or a fence post that you can attach to without getting in trouble, then you can use a U-bolt, something that you have to provide, but you can put a U-bolt in there and mount this thing directly to a pole. So that gives you three different ways to mount this bracket. All right, so I was in the middle of wrapping up that video and showing you how all that works with the uh, counterpoise. So I didn't get a chance to get on the air. I was hoping to actually set that up. I'm actually downstream, probably three miles. Um, everybody was mobilizing, so I got kicked out of the park. I didn't even have time to shoot any video or pictures of what it was like up there. But back to the antenna brackets. Do I think all of these antenna brackets are usable for HF? portable operation? Absolutely. Every one of them has a place and a need. You've got your budget, you've got your mid-grade, and total flex flexibility or functionality. I would say the SNK bracket has the most functionality and the most flexibility to change it up to multiple configurations. The Chameleon antenna bracket, it's solid, stable, and fits on those park benches like a piece of cake and is really robust, should last a long time. And the other bracket, I didn't have a pole to hook it onto, but I have done it before, so I know how well that thing works. You never can be prepared enough. You never know what you're gonna find and the opportunities that will present themselves for setting up a radio out in an environment like this or somewhere near where your home might be. I hope these brackets, using these and showing them how they work, I hope this helps you in some way and maybe helps you add to your kit for getting out and operating portable. Thanks for watching, 73. We'll catch you guys on the next one.